Good afternoon. We're looking at the attributes of God. Today we'd like to look at the attribute of God, which is love. God is love. So please, let me read just a short portion from 1 John 4, 8. The verse reads, Whoever does not love does not know God. And here's what I want to focus on. Because God is love. The source of all love is God. So, what we're doing here as we look at the attributes of God is to look at what God is in himself. Everything he is is in himself. He doesn't have anything coming in from outside himself. So if I say God is love, then he is obviously the origin of love. That's who he is. God is love. So let me just share briefly. You know, words are cheap. They really are. We can say things that have no meaning no substance ascribed to them. It's real easy to say, I love you. Everybody uses that terminology sometime in the course of their life. But when we think about it, words are cheap. I can say, I love you. But the question that might be asked is, well, how do you know that I love you? So let me give you an illustration. Make believe. Uh, a young woman, she's in high school, she's a junior, she's the um, leader of the cheerleading squad. She's stunningly beautiful. Everybody likes her. She's uh, probably the most respected and, and highly esteemed young woman in the junior class. And she happens to have a boyfriend, <clears throat> and he's the captain of the football team. He's a handsome guy, great student. You know, he's just a, a, a really first class sort of guy. And he likes her. And they do things together. They go to dances together. They go to movies and so on. And at some point, this young man says to her, I love you. Now, what question might that young woman want to find an answer for? Well, I think the question would be, well, how do I know he loves me? Words are cheap. So in our make-believe story, the next day after that weekend when he said, I love you, she happens to be in the stacks at the school library. And she looks down at the end of the row and here's her captain of the football team hugging her best friend, another cheerleader. Now, obviously, those words were cheap. There's her proof. He doesn't love her. He's interested in that other girl as well. So... The problem with humankind is we use words, but they're not often backed up by reality. We have a right to ask the same question of God. Okay, God, you say you're love and you love us. How do we know you loved us? How do you know you love us? That's a fair question. And the answer is stunningly uh, descriptive. I know God loves me because of one thing. There are many, but I'm just going to mention one. He became a man, Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect life, never sinned. And he went to the cross and died as a substitute sacrifice for me. Now, when I think about that, when he says, I love you, and then tells me that because of his sacrificial death, he is able to forgive me, cleanse me, and because of his resurrection, give me a brand new life. He says, all these things accrue to the one who repents of their sin and turns to God uh, in faith to receive the gift of eternal life. So when God says, I love you, these words are not cheap. They're backed up by evidence. It turns out it's historical, historical evidence. Christ really existed. He really was a perfect guy. And he really died on a cross. And, and there's historical evidence. He rose from the dead. There's the proof that God's words are not hollow. They can be trusted. So if God loves me and says he loves me, then for me, I need to really come to grips with the fact that he has evidenced that love. They aren't cheap words. So what do I see when I look at the cross? If you'll accept it, Jesus Christ of course, was God. That's verified from the scriptures. God the Father put him to death. What greater love could there be than for God the Father to turn against himself 
both the Son and the Father are equal, and to put Jesus Christ to death, to punish him in my place. In a sense, God the, was punishing himself. God punished himself so that I could have forgiveness of sin, can have a brand new life. There isn't any greater love than the creator of the universe punishing himself so that I could be free to enjoy him, to love him, and to be with him for eternity. God doesn't use cheap words. That's the wonder of God's word. It's true. It's faithful. There's integrity there. There's no hollowness. Every word has meaning, and they all come to us from the mouth of God. The word of God is the mouth of God, and the mouth of God is coming from the heart of God. So when God says, I love you, we have ample proof that that love is real, sustaining, and eternal. God bless you.